Happy Honey Wash Day. Welcome relatives. Good morning. Good afternoon. I would like to welcome you to the American Indian College Fund College Readiness and College Access Programming. Next slide. Let's give it a, give a minute or so for people to log in and join us. Please drop in the chat. Let us know what schools are on with us if you're joining us right now. Let us acknowledge our wonderful presenter, our viewers and educators from the past, present and future. Let us open our minds and hearts to receiving this knowledge in a good way that will help pave the way to better ourselves and our communities through higher education. Before we begin our session, let us thank Creator for all that we are and all that we have as we navigate into a promising future. Prayers for all you joining us today and that you may be blessed and watched over. The American Indian College Fund was founded in 1989 for over 31 years, the College Fund has been the nation's largest charity supporting Native students access to higher education. We provide scholarships and programming to improve Native American students access to higher education and the support and tools they need to succeed. Our mission at the American Indian College Fund is that we invest in Native students and tribal college education to transform lives and communities. Thank you and welcome for joining us today for um, College as a Choice first year experience. Um, I'd like to just introduce myself. My name is Jenna Gray. I am the College Readiness Associate. I am Sichangu Lakota from the Rosebud Sioux Tribe. Um, and my colleague is Rowanna Shabala. She is the College Readiness Program Administrator. And we are so thankful to bring this programming to um, our seniors who are graduating in a couple or yeah literally a month and a half or so a couple months so congratulations to you as you're finishing off your school year next slide I am going to hand the mic over to our first year experience program college success coach Adriana so take it away Adriana thank you yeah, Jenna. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Adriana So, and like Jenna mentioned, I am one of the college success coaches with the American Indian College Fund. Um, we do have three college success coaches. Once you are awarded one of our scholarships, um, you're paired up basically with one of us uh, college success coaches. And along with being a college success coach, I also run the first year experience program. Um, so before we get into that, I'm going to, you know, just tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit of my own personal experiences and what, and then we'll go into what the first year, what the first year experience program is, um, the different programs that are entailed in that, what topic areas we go over, um, some, you know, future things that are going to be popping up over the summer and then just more, um, more uh, information as we go along. So next slide, please. Awesome. So um, I, like I mentioned, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my first experience, my first year experience. So um, the first year experience basically is anybody who's going to college for the first time. It can be, you know, the traditional student who is graduating from high school, going right to college. It can be also a non-traditional student who's going to college for the very first time, no matter what life stage they're in. So here's a little bit about my personal experience that I do share with um my first year scholars as well, just to kind of get a little bit of familiarity. But for me, I started out big. I went to a large university a thousand miles away from home in Oregon. I'm originally from New Mexico and I experienced a lot of different things. I experienced culture shock, definitely being away from the reservation, not for the first time, but being away that far, you know, for the first time around a community that I'd never been to, around people that I've never met before. Just, you know, whenever you're in new spaces and um, experiencing things for the first time, your senses tend to get a little heightened. Um, you can smell things more strongly, you can feel things more strongly. And for some reason, whenever I walk into my first dorm that I stayed in um, on my university, 
I can still, the, the smell of just walking into the dorm definitely like hits me different. It was a newer dorm that I was in, so I'm really fortunate for that, but um, it was just the smell that always gets to me and it reminds me of all the different things that I went through when I was at that college. Um, definitely experienced homesickness. It wasn't too intense um, just because my college hometown or my college town wasn't that big. It wasn't really in the city, but definitely being away thousands of miles away from home, fearing of missing out on so many different things that are happening back home in the community, you know, the fairs, the family get togethers, the different tribal events, the cultural events, you know, I was missing out on all of those and definitely made me miss being home. And, you know, it, especially being away from family for that long as well, like during long periods of time and not really having enough funds to like go back and forth during the breaks and everything, like my peers would be able to. And that just made it, you know, a really interesting experience in the beginning. Um, and I also went through vitamin D deficiencies as well, because um, Oregon is a very cloudy state and I'm from New Mexico, which is tend to be more sunny. So definitely went through that first time ever going through that. Um, but what I did was I found a lot of community in my own um, campus. <clears throat> um, the first community that I became a part of was the Voyagers program. And that was a pre-orientation activity. So my school, when... Um, you get admitted, you're offered an opportunity to attend one of the various pre-orientation activities. So that's, you know, um, they had a bunch of outdoors activities. So there was one that was a kayaking trip, a backpacking, um, surfing over at the coast. And I actually signed on to this very last minute and I was able to go on the urban pursuits, which, which was uh, spending a few days in the city of Portland and just kind of exploring um, you know, going to all the really cool things, going to eat some really good food and everything. And I think that was really good for me. Um, although I would have loved going to the outdoor pursuits, I really enjoyed the urban pursuits because I got to get a little bit more familiar with the city that I was in and um, just really, you know, kind of getting my my gears going and just kind of getting familiar with my surroundings. So it made it, it, made it really easy to kind of transition into the city and everything um, being coming from like a rural community. Um, I also started working, I did work study as well. So work study, of course, um, you can get that through the Pell Grant. Um, but you, <clears throat> I started working in admissions as a, um, a tour guide. I also would um, help them as well with their um, intake, call outs, um, tours, you know, so many different things in admissions. I also worked in the advising office um, as the front desk assistant. So I would do a lot of like paper processing, scheduling meetings, you know, a lot of just different um, secretary kind of things. And then I also worked in the post office. Honestly, that was one of my most favorite jobs um, because I got to go all over campus, got to intake mail, got to write up, you know, little sips and put it in the mailboxes and then students would come and pick up your packages. And it was just an overall really fun experience. And honestly, this is where I really found a lot of resources and people that would help me later in life, even to this day, who I still go to and um, utilize as mentors in my, um, as I'm still going in my college journey as well, but even in my own professional journey. And I, I owe a lot of my skills and everything to taking these little jobs at campus, because um, no matter if it's not even in your field or anything, taking jobs like this um, definitely kind of build your skills to utilize, you know, in day-to-day -day tasks. I also joined a lot of clubs stepped out of my comfort zone. I joined a rugby club for some reason. Um, that was when I was just walking around the club fair and they were looking for recruits. So I joined and I played that first year. It was definitely really different, but it was really fun. So I definitely um, enjoyed that time. And I also had a lot of learning experiences. You know, I did fail a class my first year because I wasn't managing my time very well. And it was a 7.30 a.m. class. So I wasn't exactly up and ready to go to class at 7 30 so sometimes I would miss out on that and eventually did end up failing the class which was really detrimental honestly because I was an excelling student you know throughout high school throughout like my you know uh, secondary school and everything but when I failed that class it kind of just hit me where I'm like dang okay so I guess I can fail a class so <laughs> um also faced unfortunately racial discrimination roommate drama and also um, just, you know, time management and setting my own schedule. So these are all things that kind of go through your first experience. Um, hopefully some of you will not experience this to this extent, but some of you might have similar ones, but that's kind of what I utilize to help run the first year experience program using my own personal experiences and others who also work with me and others that I have also, you know, helped experience and everything to gear and to work these topics into our programming. So next slide, please.
<clears throat> awesome. So now we're going to get into what is the first year experience program. So like I mentioned, it's programming and support for all students going into their first year of college. And it's designed to offer full circle support in that pipeline from high school to college, but also um, catering to those non traditional students who might, you know, have not gone that traditional route and have had life happen to them, did a career first or have family or, you know, so many different things, waited to go to college, but they're still going to college for the first time. So we cater to both uh, traditional and non-traditional groups. Next slide, please. We have a little bit of a delay, so just um, bear with us here for a bit. All right, so who is the first year student? Who are the students that we work with? Like I mentioned, we work with um, both traditional and non-traditional students that are attending college or university for the first time at the undergraduate level. So I just have some, and terminology is a really big thing as well, working with our scholars, especially first year scholars who might be, this might be the first time they're hearing a lot of these terms. And, you know, we, if, as working in higher education, we get really used to utilizing these terms and we know off the hand what it is, but we never want to assume that everybody else knows what we're talking about. So we try to explain everything and make sure that we're being intentional with our terminology and that everybody's understanding and explaining it, you know. So undergraduate level is anywhere, anybody who's trying to obtain their associates, bachelor's or certificate. So your associates is your two year program, bachelor's is four year and certificates vary, but those are usually a, run about a year or so. And traditional student is any student who has obtained their high school diploma or GED, and then immediately goes right into college the next academic, the next academic term. <clears throat> then a non-traditional student is any student who's going to college for the first time after a few years, not immediately after high school. And another term you might all know and be more aware of is a freshman. So a lot of colleges and universities still utilize this term, which is fine, but I know there's a lot of other institutions that are trying to get away from using that terminology and utilizing first year student, um, just because it, it kind of caters a little bit more to like the first year student. And it also depends on like your, how many credit loads you're taking for the first semester as well, but we won't get into that. That's a little too complicated. Next slide. I'm going to think about these pauses when I can take some water breaks. <laughs> so what areas do the first year program experience cover? And this comes from feedback. We are very feedback driven here at the College Fund. And some of our scholars might know too that we uh, do surveys and we really do take your scholar voice um, very seriously. And we try to uh, utilize that feedback to put back into our programming for the next coming year. So these are kind of the top areas that I found when we did the um, first year program like you know last year and then in the summer series as well um, these are some of the areas that are our most common asks from our current and prospective first year students so first one is motivation how to keep motivated to stay in college and how to ask for help when needed this is definitely a really big area not just for first year students some of them get the, get it down but for a lot of our students they still have struggles with asking for help or even staying motivated i'm sure you know some high schools and other institutions have seen a decrease in um college accept or not college acceptance college um applications uh, and just because, you know, the stigma is kind of changing where college isn't like your immediate go to. There's so many different areas people are going to. They're going to trades they're going right into careers and everything. But um, for those who are wanting to pursue higher education or having a little bit of trouble staying motivated or kind of getting intimidated by the application process or just being in college in the in that environment for the first time, really taking care of yourself and, you know, building your own schedule and trying to manage your own time wisely and balancing a lot of different things. You know, while you're in college, you're not just a student. Some, a lot of students will get a job. Um, maybe some of you are, you know, your parents, you have kids or you're a caretaker to some of your family members, or maybe, you know, you're just kind of, you know, doing so many different things. You're wearing so many different hats and have responsibilities. So it's really easy to kind of get demotivated in college when you have a lot of different things happening in life. And that's where um, in the first year program, we try to <clears throat> normalize this and acknowledge the fact that, you know, life happens. 
life happens, there's going to be things that are thrown at you. And sometimes it's going to, you know, really take a toll on yourself. You know, like for my example, um, I lost my grandmother when I was a sophomore and I was really close with her and um, definitely took a detrimental toll on myself. And I stopped going to classes and everything. And then eventually that led to me, you know, um, feeling that one class. Um, but it's really important to find what brings you out of those holes and brings you back up to motivation. It can be a support system. It can be your friends, maybe a trusted instructor. You're really utilizing your advisors. Um, I know some schools might have, you know, a low number of advisors for a big number of students, but it's really important for you to really find that support system and find coping mechanisms, you know, uh, something that's healthy, you know, getting away from your desk or wherever you're working from your work, get away from it, go outside, get a breath of fresh air, go get some food in your system, definitely take care of yourself, go, um, go watch a movie or, you know, get, get away from whatever is stressing you out during that point and then go back to it when you have a clear, clearer mind. So there's a lot of different things that can help motivate us. And I'm a really big in, I'm a really big believer in support systems. I definitely think support systems and having your go-to person, at least, you know, to go to and to make you kind of get away from all the stressors that are happening or somebody that you can kind of just talk to and that can bring you out of those things. Uh, time management. Time management is also a really big one. Um, my quote here is, I would like to learn how to manage my time more effectively so that I don't fall behind in classes and how to stay organized. So definitely something that, I mean, even myself, I'm still trying to uh, figure out in my adult years, I guess, <laughs> um, time management, how to balance a lot of different things, you know, having a full-time job, but in your case, you know, being a student, maybe not also having a full-time job, doing so many different things. And again, really wearing all those multiple hats and having multiple responsibilities, it's easy to kind of lose time and everything. So we go through a lot of um, study and organizing tips and um, also share, again, personal experiences. Some things might work for you that doesn't work for others. Myself, I love having multiple like notebooks and planners that I use to help, help keep me on track. But I also utilize my uh, calendar with our work email as well to kind of help set reminders for some of you. It might be, you know, setting reminders on your phone, uh, having a post-it note, making checklists, highlighting, color coding different things, just as long as you're making sure that you're not missing anything. And then also um, setting aside some time at the beginning of the week, preferably. I do mine on Sundays where you sit down and you say, okay, what's What's all going on? Um, I do mine on Sundays because Mondays usually are always really busy and everything. So when you try to, you know, set aside some time for yourself, find what works for you, and that'll help you kind of keep your self-managing. And then finding additional support. So another thing that scholars ask us is I would like to know how, I would like to know more about different scholarships and ways to save money and stay out of college debt as much as possible, which I wish... I mean, that was the same thing for me, but I also um, accumulated college debt, which sucks, but there's definitely more ways, a lot of different ways that you can find different scholarships, grant money. Um, also, you know, there's other op uh, op options as well. So uh, travel colleges are a really amazing route to go to firsthand um, after you go, after, after you graduate from high school or even just kind of going to college for the first time. A lot of travel colleges, there's 36 out here in the country, you know, um, they offer so many different programs and they're really innovative as well. I know there might be a little bit of a stigma with travel colleges, but a lot of them are giving you really great hands-on opportunities. A lot of time that, you know, at state level or bigger universities, a lot of their students don't get to utilize until they get into their master's degree. But, you know, for tribal colleges, they're doing a lot of really amazing work. And we definitely always encourage our students to, you know, reconsider tribal colleges. And especially it's very affordable, too. A lot of them are offering, you know, discounted tuition. They also offer online classes, if that's more your jam as well. Just so many different things that tribal colleges have to offer and also community colleges, you know, community colleges are also in there as well. If you want to, start, there's nothing wrong with starting out with those or, you know, it's more preferable. Again, if you want to be more affordable, then you can always transfer over to a bigger university. Um, a lot of tribal colleges and community colleges will have transfer programs where they'll help you with your credits, take these classes here. And then when you're ready, you'll transfer over to the bigger university to finish out your bachelor's or whatever degree that you want to obtain. Um, there's also a lot of different internship opportunities, uh, fellowships, research opportunities, and then, you know, a lot of the time uh, we throw out all these things and everything, but with our first year students, this is your first time kind of getting into this, maybe you might have heard of it, 
this might be your first time hearing of it, we try to cater both areas again, and we try to explain what these are and how beneficial they are, especially when you're getting into college or being in college for the first time. You know, college is definitely the hub of places for a lot of these different opportunities because organizations, businesses, um, you know, all these different uh, businesses and everything and organizations, they want college students. They want college students to um, take advantage of these opportunities for internships, researches. Um, they'll, you know, send you money to travel, attend conferences to, you know, report on your research. There's so many different things that are going to be happening to you and giving, you know, getting you opportunities and everything. So it's always good to kind of, um, in the first year program, we try to help these students, you know, try to find how to get these and what's, you know, available for them, what they can take advantage of and where they can see themselves too. Again, a lot of these different application processes and even just the research in general of these um, additional supports can be overwhelming sometimes, can be a little intimidating, but, um, you know, you're more than, you are more than capable of doing all of them and you belong in those spaces just as much as anybody else. So we try to really build up the morale and motivation and support in the, um, in the first year program as well. Next one. <clears throat> awesome. So here are some of the past topic sessions that have just been occurring. So these, uh, I've been with the college fund for a little over a year and a half now. So um, these are some of the sessions that we just started and the first year program is relatively new with the college fund, especially in the student services. So we're just gearing up and we're, you know, getting more ideas and everything. And I definitely have an opportunity if you have any topics you would like to suggest as well, um, in our newsletter sign up. So we'll get into that in the next couple slides, but, um, finding more financial aid, of course, this is a really big one and we want our students to find and try to utilize scholarships as much as we can because as we know scholarships are scholarships are money that you do not have to spend back along with grants as well and then we try to steer away from loans a little bit but sometimes that's our last resort <clears throat> um, but you know finding other scholarship opportunities recommending them bringing in some of those reps to talk to the student the first year students as well is really um, important and really you know we're trying to gear up more for that and then like I mentioned transfer support um, some of our students are already, you know, on the ball and want to become a part of the transfer system at their college or they're interested in transferring to a different school or a different college. So <clears throat> that's something that um, we're introducing to the students as well as an option too. So, you know, but also looking at your own school to see if they already have a bachelor's program or if they already have that transfer system to utilize and, you know, what that even entails. And then also talking about the experience as well. You know, I was a transfer student. So um, I share my experiences of, you know, like feeling like you might be starting all over again, going to a new school and stuff, especially because for me, I was placed in with the orientation with all the incoming freshman students. So <clears throat> a lot of the stuff I already knew, but um, they just put me in there because that was my first time going to that school. So, uh, but everybody's transfer experience is definitely different. If you have that specific transfer program that helps you go um, they'll definitely, you know, have that full circle support with you and definitely something to utilize. And then setting yourself up for success. So like, you know, that goes in with the motivation, being self-determined, self-advocating for yourself, you know, um, because again, so many different things happen in college and um, sometimes you really need to step up for yourself. And then also, you know, it goes into like looking for more scholarships, looking for more opportunities to for academics, you know, doing a research opportunity, traveling abroad, um, going to a conference for the first time, how to find funding for that. Uh, there's just so many different ways that you can set yourself up to utilize all these things that are given to you. And college definitely is the best place for you to be, um, to have these opportunities to you. Because, you know, if you're on campus, you see them on bulletin boards, you get the emails. Um, you know, the emails are like probably the biggest thing. And then also creating that LinkedIn profile. We go through like the, um, the business professional side of it as well, like creating your LinkedIn, how to set up your elevator pitch, like how to introduce yourself, how to network with other people and talk about, you know, your opportunities and your goals that you want to take advantage of. And hopefully, you know, talking with somebody, <clears throat> talking with a potential employer or somebody that you want to mentor you 
um, in a different area or career that you want to get into. Staying grounded and motivated. Uh, again, like we we're talking about um, motivation and helping students keep to their values. So <clears throat> I know I said success, but we try to steer away from using the word success with our scholars just because um, it holds a lot of weight, you know, as success in a lot of different worlds with Western ideology um, depends on the numeric numbers. So having the highest GPA, having all straight A's and everything, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, that, that is success, but it really should be success to your own perspective. So whether that's, you know, making it through the semester with passing grades or um, juggling a job and being a student at the same time, those are just as equal as being successful, you know, and then also getting the high grades and GPA, that is a success as well. So um, make sure that you're making sure that your values are staying aligned with what you want to do. And then we know that values and goals do change very, you know, progressively as you get into like your um, programs and get more into higher education and over the years and everything, you know, that might change. Maybe you were an English major, but now you want to go into math or something. I don't know why I made those two, but definitely that's something, you know, and just making sure that you're staying true to yourself. Why are you going into higher education? Why did you choose that route? You know, who, what do you want to do with your degree? What do you want to do with this afterwards? What is your plan after you graduate with your degree? Are you going to continue to your master's? Are you going to do your doctorate? Are you going to take a gap year? Are you going to travel? You know, what are you going to do? So we try to help students kind of put things into perspective and um, help them set realistic goals and think <clears throat> forward as well. Not too forward, but, you know, try to help them kind of get those steps going there. Uh, researching academic opportunities, like I mentioned, research internships, jobs, traveling abroad. There's so many different areas and um, that students want to learn more about, as well as specific areas. I know a lot of our STEM first-year scholars want to hear more from Native professionals in STEM. So we've had a representative from NASA come talk to them. We've also had somebody from, and I cannot remember the acronym off the top of my head, but um, they're based in Atlanta. I cannot remember, but you know, we try to bring in some professionals that are um, on the ground working in you know in STEM spaces, and then also in other major spaces as well, other uh, fields of um, studies to come in and talk with these students to give them perspective again and tell them you know their own experiences, especially if they're native professionals working in those spaces. Definitely something that's very valuable to the first year students. The power of communicating with your instructors is another really big one, um, as we know or as we might. <clears throat> also think too, um, when you're applying for different opportunities, whether it's an internship, fellowship, job, travel abroad, a lot of the time they're going to ask you for a letter of recommendation or somebody who can be like your reference and your professors are definitely a go-to person for that. And that's why it's really important to keep that communication going with them and really visiting their office hours as well, emailing them whenever you have a question or if you're curious about something that they brought up in class, really forming that you know relationship with them. And then eventually they may become your mentor as well, especially if they're in the field that you want to go into. So <clears throat> let's say you're in health and you want to go into public health and you're taking a public health class and your professor, you know, you have a question about an assignment, you go to their office hours, you kind of introduce yourself a little bit, and then you say, you know, I want to go into public health because I want to help, you know, do this X, Y, and Z. So then, you know, they'll help you and they'll motivate you and they'll um, help you kind of set up your path. And they might even give you recommendations on who else to talk to, um, websites to look up, grants to look up if you wanted to do a research opportunity. Um, it's really important to utilize your instructors because they have a vast network of professionals and um, individuals that they can refer you to. And that's how you build your network as well. Uh, and then career job readiness, you know, it kind of just sums up everything. And what do you want to do afterwards with your degree? Do you want to go directly into your career? Do you want to get a job, you know, that'll help you give you extra spending money to, you know, on, on the side, you know, if you want to go grocery shopping or something, uh, creating a resume, uh, mock interviews, those are something we're going to start doing. We did it once in the past, but we're going to be doing, bringing that back up again here in the spring. I'm definitely talking about those different things. And then also, you know, like, what is a career? What is a different, what is like, <clears throat> what is like financial literacy? What is wealth? You know, all those different things we're going to be getting into those conversations. So it sounds like a lot, but definitely there's so many different things that we can add on to these um, topic sessions as well. Next slide.
All righty. So now, <clears throat> let's see, my screen froze up on me for a second. Okay, here we are. So now we're going to look at the timelines that we kind of um, follow the students into. So it can vary, you know, um, I know more of us are familiar with the semester system, but there's also the quarter system as well that runs a little bit differently. So we try to just sum them up into terms instead of using semester or quarter. So your fall term usually runs anywhere from June to the end of the year in December. So <clears throat> as we know, um, students uh, go through different experiences within each semester and there's kind of an overlying theme with each month of each semester or of each term, I should say, sorry. And um, it's important for the first year program for us to kind of put together and brainstorm those themes of what, what each student might be going through throughout the terms so that we can kind of better address and want to implement different programming, you know, so like um, reflection, we usually like to do that during the end of the year. So in December, what worked for me? What didn't work for me this semester? What should I change? Am I taking too many classes? And can I add one more on? Is this really the um, field that I want to go into? Am I ready to declare a major? You know, just different things like that. And then I'm definitely, I'm suddenly like backwards. I don't know why, but um, in July, <clears throat> that's orientation period. That's when you'll just think about moving into school, moving into college, whether you're sitting in the residential hall, that's when you'll do a lot of the registration for classes, getting your school ID, taking advantage of some of those pre-orientation activities. So some of them will have like a first year or a bridge program or like a outdoor pursuits thing like I did. So just, you know, talking about those and then thinking about different um, deadlines. So when do I move into the dorms if I am? When does the semester actually begin? Then you get more into it, you start your classes, you start doing all the syllabus, reading all the syllabuses and everything, and um, seeing if you like your class schedule, if it's manageable, and then if you need to add any classes or if you want to drop any classes, when is that date for, when is the final date to do that? <clears throat> and then midterms, midterms is usually the midpoint when everybody kind of does that assessment in their classes to see if they really understand the course materials and then see if they need to reach out to any of their professors. This is really when you want to utilize those office hours and everything. And then November is usually kind of like a blurry time where you're trying to prep for final exams, really studying, but then also starting to prepare. And then usually that's kind of when uh, registration will open up for your next term of classes. So next one. So that's a little bit of the fall term in a uh, <clears throat> brief summary um but again it can look different for everybody but that's kind of like the overlying themes for each month for some of the students and that's what we try to keep in mind when we do the um when we do like the programming and stuff <clears throat> okay, so now for spring term, again, um, some things are more similar, but it's more of a year or it's more of a term for like regrowth and um, different things like that. So, um, you know, you kind of set your goals again for the spring semester in January. And then in February, that's kind of when you get a lot of emails about registering or also, you know, like applying for housing again, if you're going to stay on campus. And then maybe this is around the point when you know that you want to go into um, what major you want to go into. Um, maybe there's some summer opportunities that you want to take advantage of or um, <clears throat> financial aid, other scholarships. So that's when you think about that. And then uh, May and June, that's, you know, you can celebrate that you've completed your first year of college and now you can utilize your learning experiences and go into your second year even stronger and you know, having a better idea of what you want and having a better idea of what to expect within the next coming years and everything. So um, yeah, congratulations. That's when you completed your first year, first year. Next slide, please. All right, so um, this is last year's schedule, but something with the first year experience we also do during the summer is the first year experience virtual summer series. This is a free virtual conference basically that goes over um, a lot of preparatory topics and workshops that'll help all students who are transitioning or you know going into their first year of college 
and talks about different topics of, you know, what to expect and what to prepare for and everything. Um, last year, approximately, we had about 80 attendees, and that includes um, non-traditional, traditional students who are newly graduated and preparing to go into that first year of college, uh, families of those students or any perspective, families or perspective students who are wanting to go to college, um, any staff from high school, colleges, really anybody is invited to attend this. It's free again for anybody to do. And we had about three weeks of content. So um, we had stuff about orientation 101. What does orientation even entail for different colleges? What are we supposed to do here and everything? Um, how to find more money for school. We <clears throat> we looked a lot, you know, I utilized our uh, student services staff for this, but we also reached out to other TCUs and um, other, you know, young professionals who are working in the education space. Um, I did a workshop on time management. Um, we had a discussion about being a first year student, a first generation student, I should say. So that's being the first in your family to go to college ever. And then being persistent in the face of adversity, you know, when challenges are brought to you, how do you stay persistent? How do you keep yourself motivated and kind of bounce back into um, your schedule and, you know, without getting too many road bumps and everything? Um, you really exhausting your resources, you know, on campus, online, with your advisors, you know, how to, where to look for help and how to even start where to looking for help. Um, goal setting, establishing a growth mindset, you know, starting to establish your way up and what you can do to improve on yourself. Like again, next semester during your reflection periods, you can use that and you can um, set yourself goals, what worked for you, what didn't work for you to go on to the next semester. We even had a workshop on ADA accommodations. For, so for those students who have disabilities, <clears throat> both visible and invisible, definitely. Um, we had a session on that with Joan, who is a um, specialist at Northwestern Indian College who talked about where to, how to advocate for yourself, your, you know, your, um, your laws and your rights that you can utilize and where to, you know, even start to um, advocate for yourself at school and where to find those information. Um, we had something about internships and careers, you know, what is that info session and then um, just talking about that. And then we had a lot of guest speakers as well come in to give some motivating speeches to the students. So, you know, as you're getting into college and you're starting, you're kind of getting into the fall semester, into college for the very first time, um, motivation is definitely something that is needed. So um, we had some really cool um, guest speakers come in and talk about just what they wanted to um, share with the students, their own advice, their personal experiences and stories. And that was really, you know, widely accepted by the students. So we're looking to do something similar again this year. So definitely keep a lookout for that. Um, go to the next one. And they are recorded and um, available on our YouTube channel as well. So if you wanted to see any of those sessions, you're more than welcome to visit our YouTube channel. Um, we also launch a newsletter during the summer. So it's called Launching Your First Year. And it's a bi-weekly newsletter that comes out and it gives you a bunch of infographics about just different things to think about when you're getting to college. So one of the most types of financial aid, uh, scholarships, again, uh, you don't have to pay back. Uh, grants, you don't have to pay back. Work study, you earn as you work. Pell grants, you don't pay back. The only thing that you would have to pay back is the interest um, with loans with interest and fees. So just kind of, you know, breaking things down like that, even picking a college major, recalling your last experience, your past experiences, what is something that you're passionate in, and asking for help using your instructors or um, mentors or friends and peers. Um, doing what you want to do, looking at the big picture, really putting out things into perspective and looking and researching the steps, even in your own program too, of what school or what um, classes you need to utilize, what classes you need to fulfill. And then, um, you know, if you need to take any tests, so like if you want to become an accountant, you have to take the CPA exam. So, you know, just kind of think, thinking different things like that. And of course, you don't have to do this all by yourself. Most of the time, your college will assign you a um, advisor in the field that you want to go into. So then you can always ask these questions to them and they'll be more than willing to help you. But a lot of time, you know, when you're getting into your first year, um, you might not know what you want to do. So that's totally fine. You would go in as an undecided student. And more than likely at the time, you don't have to decide or declare your major until like your second year when you're getting into second year. But if you're, you know, really sure about what you want to go into, then you can definitely declare right then and there. It's kind of like up to you on that basis. Next slide, please. <clears throat> All right, so this is for the first year newsletter. If anybody is interested, I definitely recommend you to 
um, sign up for it. We're gonna be gearing it up here for the next month. Um, that's when I'm gonna, I'm gonna be re releasing more information about the summer series that's coming up this summer, um, what those topics are gonna look like, um, if anybody's interested in helping out and hosting a session, that's definitely always welcomed as well. Um, as well as, you know, different things that you can uh, suggest on different topics that you might think uh, first year students are available to, or that might be um, accessible for students to utilize, especially going into their first year of college. Um, any words of advice, any um, topics or feedback, definitely always welcome in the first year newsletter. And um, yeah, the link is in the chat, um, but you can also take a picture of the QR code. Um, but yeah, definitely sign up for that and we'll be sending out emails here very shortly. So in our next slide. So lastly, I just wanna end off on some quotes from our first year scholars. <clears throat> um, at the end of each semester, we like to send out a survey to them to for them to share out any like experiences they learned in their first year, um, you know, any feedback, comments, or any accomplishments that they achieved, you know, we like to highlight those and share them with everybody. But um, I'm going to read a few of these. You can also read them. I have met and new people and gotten involved in extracurricular activities. I've stayed on track with my classes and I've learned to reach out for help when needed. After attending a FYE session about participating in activities other than academics, I started volunteering a lot more. I began adventuring way out of my comfort zone. I was really struggling to get adjusted to college. I was homesick and felt overwhelmed with all responsibilities. I wanted to quit, but pushed myself to go to rehearsals and classes. I did my best on my work and got good grades this semester. So we celebrate all the victories, we celebrate and we acknowledge all the challenges that come in with um, being a college student. We understand that, you know, life continues to happen. There's some things and obstacles, road bumps that are thrown in students' way, you know, <clears throat> and it's really important for us to acknowledge that and to respect the students in their time whenever we do get this chance to work with them. So um, we always encourage and uh, celebrate these victories that they share with us and that they're comfortable to tell us and share with us as well. So yeah, um, but I think that's pretty much it for me. The next slide just has my contact information. Thank you all so much for sitting and listening. I hope you learned a little bit more about the first year experience program. And, um, you know, once you're, uh, once you're admitted into the first year or into the, um, our scholarship program, you, you know, work with the college success coaches, but the first year experience program is open to anybody. So definitely keep a lookout for the summer series that'll be released on the newsletter and then on social media as well. You can follow us on Native Pathways. That's where we'll be releasing the full schedule as well when that's ready to go and then the um, registration information as well. So thank you, Akiaha, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adriana. That was an awesome presentation. I am also dropping our College as a Choice survey monkey in the chat. Please um, scan the QR code. If you have any questions, please reach out to the College Readiness team at nativepathways at collegefund.org. We hope you enjoyed this programming and we look forward to seeing you again soon in the future, maybe in the fall, because this is our last live. So. Congratulations to all the seniors um, who are graduating and good luck in your first year of college. Wopila Tonka, have a good day. Thank you.